Thank you, thank you, Dr. Akash, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, can I request the IT team to allow me to share my screen, please? Yes, sir. Are my slides visible? Yes. Okay. So I think without me uh, wasting much time, we'll have a, we'll move forward with our today's topic. That is hypertensive disorder in pregnancy. So currently, this term has been obsolete from our current guideline. Uh, uh, pregnant uh, hypertension in pregnancy. So now we call it as hypertensive disorder in pregnancy. So what is hypertensive disorder in pregnancy? So when we measure patient blood uh, blood pressure, so systolic blood pressure of more than 140 mm of Hg and diastolic blood pressure of more than 90, we call it as a hypertension in pregnancy. That should occur at least two uh, on at least two occasion, at least four hours apart. This complicates almost six to ten percent of the pregnancy. It might be classified as mild, moderate, and severe. I won't go into that details. So, classification of uh, hypertension disorder in pregnancy is if it is less than 20 weeks of gestation, we call it as a chronic hypertension. And if it is of more than 20 weeks of gestation, then it is preeclampsia, eclampsia, gestational hypertension, or chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. So, today we are having this uh, case symposium. So, let's start with the case. So, there is Mrs. ABC, 35 years of age, Gravida 2, Para 2, no living issues. Previous two early pre uh, preterm induced delivery around 26 weeks of gestational age for severe preeclampsia. Both babies expired due to prematurity. Now, patient is having one month and 15 days of amenorrhea, UPT positive, USD six week single live uh, intrauterine pregnancy, blood pressure of 150 and 90. So, can we predict PIH in this patient? Which tests are to be done? And can we prevent PIH in this patient? And what drugs are to be used? So, what is preeclampsia basically? So, preeclampsia is multisystem uh, progressive disorder, which is characterized by the new onset of hypertension and proteinuria or hypertension and significant end organ dysfunction with or without proteinuria after 20 weeks of pregnancy or postpartum. So, what are the criteria for diagnosis of preeclampsia? So, systolic blood pressure of more than 140, diastolic of more than 90 on at least two occasions, that is four hours apart. After 20 weeks of gestation, there should be proteinuria of more than 0.3 gram in 24 hours of urinary specimen. There might be thrombocytopenia, uh, there might be renal dysfunction, liver dysfunction, there might be pulmonary edema, new onset of persistent headache or visual disturbances or CNS disturbances. So what are the severe features of preeclampsia? So there might be severe headache or visual, visual changes, thrombocytopenia uh, or liver uh, dysfunction that is increase in liver enzymes. So why is this important? So it is one of the main cause of maternal and fetal and neonatal mortality and morbidity. So what are the outcomes that we see? The, the outcome in the maternal side would be maternal death, CNS dysfunction, hepatocellular injury, thrombocytopenia, DIC, ARF, pulmonary edema, etc. And fetal outcome would be IOGR, that is intrauterine growth restriction, low birth weight, preterm uh, delivery, etc. So, anti agents that are to be used, it is aspirin, which is indicated in mild, moderate, or high risk of patient. Uh, we can start with 75, we can increase the dose to 150 milligram of aspirin. So, how to prevent preeclampsia? We need to evaluate early in pregnancy for the risk factor of uh, preeclampsia, establish gestational age, do the routine workup, weight reduction, avoid multiple pregnancies, avoid excessive gestational weight gain, educate high risk patients about the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia, low dose of aspirin that is 75 mg per day from 12 weeks to delivery, in low uh, dietary calcium uh, intake, daily calcium uh, allowance is 1.5 to 2 grams of calcium. A second clinical scenario, the second case is Mrs. ABC, 35 year of age, Gravida 2, Para 2, with no living issues, previous two uh, early preterm induced delivery around 26 of gestational age for severe preeclampsia, both babies expired due to prematurity, patients is having 28 weeks of pregnancy and blood pressure is 150 by 100, urinary albumin is nil and no signs of end organ damage. What is the diagnosis? So here we see that there is no end organ damage or there is no proteinuria. So this is the clear cut case of gestational hypertension and how we will manage. So gestational hypertension. So most common cause of hypertension during pregnancy is gestational hypertension. It is temporary and it is the provisional diagnosis. Preeclampsia, if proteinuria or any new sense of end organ damages occur, then we can term this patient to be having uh, as preeclampsia. Chronic hypertension, if blood pressure is elevated more than 12 weeks postpartum, then it might be a case of chronic hypertension. Urinary protein and creatine ratio of more than 30 milligram. Evaluate the feature of severe diseases, perform lab tests of RFT, LFT, uh, coagulation profile, 
assess the fetal well being i think uh, our gynec colleagues might know it well and weekly follow up is necessary so we all know that the uh, for gestational hypertension blood pressure should be more than 140 and 90 so this is the third clinical scenario so mrs abc 35 year of age gravida 2 para 2 no living issues Pre uh, previous to early uh, preterm induced delivery around 26 week of gestation and both babies expired due to prematurity now the patient is having 30 weeks of pregnancy blood pressure is elevated 150 by 100 urinary albumin positive no signs of end organ damage so what is this diagnosis and how will manage so this is again preeclampsia without the feature of severe disease so rather wishing time on preeclampsia i'll move forward so what are the anti hypertensive drugs to be used so currently there is no consensus uh, as the optimal blood pressure threshold for initiating the therapy anti hypertensive treatment did not reduce the occurrence of preeclampsia or perinatal death preterm birth or abruptio placenta anti hypertensive treatment was associated with almost 40 to 70% reduction in occurrence of severe hypertension and anti hypertensive uh, treatment did not increase the frequency of delivery of small for gestational age infants so what are the medicines that we use currently so these are the agents that we use that is methyl dopa we can start with 250 mg per roller uh, twice a day we can increase it up to uh, 1000 mg uh, eight uh, uh, tds so that is 3000 mg daily dose so what are the effect of this so the agent greatest available data in pregnancy and follow up of uh, with limited maternal dizziness and fatigue lebetalo this is the most commonly used drug by our gynec colleague so we can increase the dose from 100 to 800 every 8 hourly the first line of anti hypertensive uh, agents that we use nifedipine which is short acting and nowadays extended release nifedipine is also available so we can use it up to 120 mg of the daily doses it is uh, used as a second line after use of lebetalol the third is hydralazine which we start with 100 mg and we increase it to up to 200 mg of the tail, uh, total daily dose and it is considered for acute hypertensive crisis no uh, delay onset it might cause reflex tachycardia flushing and headache ac inhibitors and arbs they are contraindicated and has adverse fetal effect in later gestation so they are not to be used so the agents picture these are the same way so uh, this shows which category this molecules falls on again so hypertension reflected to the first line acute uh, therapy so nicardipine 5 mg per hour iv by infusion pump and can be increased to the maximum of 15 mg per hour asmolol that is again the beta blocker start with 250 to 500 microgram per kg over 1 minute then iv infusion of 25 to 50 microgram per minute and titrate incrementally to the maximum of 300 microgram per minute nitroglycerin and nitroprusside are also used if uh, the other molecules are not working that efficaciously so administration of corticosteroid so i won't go in that detail about corticosteroid because majority of the our gynec colleagues might know that we need to give uh, corticosteroid for the uh, pulmonary uh, maturation and max of we use for the preventive measure to prevent uh, convulsion and seizure in the woman so eclampsia so what is eclampsia it is generalized tonic clonic seizure or coma in patient with preeclampsia the incidence is almost 2 to 3% most patient have premonitory signs and symptoms in as before uh, the initial seizure followed by general tonic clonic seizure tongue might be bitten most patient begin to recover res responsively within 10 to 20 minutes fetal bradycardia for 3 to 5 minutes is common finding during and immediately after the seizure attack preterm is approximately in 50% of the cases so what is management of pre uh, eclampsia so prevent the maternal hypoxia and trauma treatment of severe hypertension if present prevent recurrent seizure and evaluation for the prompt delivery so maxof we all know that almost 14 uh, 4 mg of uh, maxof is used for uh, over 15 to 20 minutes followed by 1 to 2 g per hour as a continuous infusion we need to monitor urinary output deep reflexes respiratory rate and serum maximum uh, maxof level if needed and dose in case of compromised renal function and toxicity and antidote so what are the long term consequences so there is chronic hypertension ischemic heart disease atherosclerosis and the other cardiovascular diseases Uh, neurovascular consequences are stroke retinal detachment diabetic retinopathy metabolic or type 2 dm uh, metabolic syndrome dyslipidemia renal or uh, glomerular dysfunction and cns is uh, cognitive dysfunction so this is the interesting case which i have seen before 2 years 
So a 26 year old pregnant female uh, G2P1 presented with hypertension and proteinuria at 20 weeks of gestation. She had history of preeclampsia in the first pregnancy. Family history was re remarkable as the mother had hypertension in her fourth decade. At 20 weeks of gestation, blood pressure was found to be elevated of almost 146 by 100. Aside from mild headache, she reportedly had no other symptoms. On physical examination, patient had a tachycardia with heart rate of 100 beats per minute. So the baseline laboratory investigation was normal, liver function and the uh, renal function was normal. The blood glucose level was almost nine, uh, 90. Patient had uh, microcytic anemia. So the quantification of urinary protein indicated that mild protein urea with protein creatine ratio of 40 mg per millimoles, uh, eco, uh, eco suggested that the patient has LVH. So what could be the differential diagnosis? So it might be preeclampsia, essential hypertension, renal artery stenosis and many more. So when we evaluated this patient, it, uh, she did not have any other fun, uh, symptoms. Then we did uh, urinary uh, catecholamines level. So we came to the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma, which is a rare cause of hypertension in pregnancy. If unrecognized, it is associated with significant maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality. The diagnosis can be established by measuring catecholamines, that is non-adrenaline and adrenaline and other metabolites. So catecholamines uh, levels in 24-hour urinary collection was found to be markedly raised. Uh, which was almost 5,659 and this patient was diagnosed with pheochromocytoma was done for the pelvis with gadolinium and enhancement and it shows that it had 4.2 cm of solid lesion in mid-abnormal aortocavalar uh, region of both uh, and it did not have any changes in adrenal gland. So, we came to know that the on the basis of the existing in investigation finding, it was concluded she had extra adrenal paraganglioma resulting in hypertension. So what was the management that was done? So at 22 weeks of gestation, the patient was started on phenoxybenzamine, titrated up to 30 mg in morning and 10 mg in the evening. Propanol was added uh, uh, several days after commencement of phenoxybenzamine. And apart from mild postural dizziness, the medical therapy was well tolerated during the remainder of the pregnancy. And uh, in the third trimester, the systolic in the diastolic blood pressure was normal. We did a genetic study for this patient and it came out to be uh, SDHD deficiency. So it's a gene uh, which was deficient in that patient. And then after delivery, patient was operated for the same after four months of delivery. So what is the take home message for today's talk? So hypertensive disorder in pregnancy affects almost six to 10% of the pregnancy, which contributes to 12% in maternal mortality, uh, systolic blood pressure of more than 140 and diastolic of more than 90. Uh, Gestational hypertension might be temporary diagnosis, preeclampsia, definition and that we all uh, now we have understood very well. So the predi uh, prediction uh, depends on the severity and uh, the complication. So antihypertensive agents to be used in non-severe hypertension and in severe hypertension. The target blood pressure should be less than 135 and 85. So antihypertensive we use is labradol, hydralazine, nifedipine. The target blood pressure should be less than 130. AC meters and the ARBs are contraindicated in pregnancy. So this is for delivery for gynecology. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me time.